Uh, my name is uh, Henry Bustamante, and I'm a product manager for Cisco. And today, I'm going to be talking about the Service Exchange Platform, or SXP, and show you how we're using the platform to connect up uh, B2B exchanges with uh, Cisco connected processes. So, Cisco today is providing uh, purpose built um, applications and services that's helping our customers thrive in a hyper distributed world. We're providing a streaming analytics that allows data virtualiz virtualization and aggregation. Uh, services so that we can get closer to the data. We're providing secure clouds so that we are providing exchanges to share applications and data to support key business processes and application platforms that allow us to deliver interactive experiences and also allow us to engage with customers uh, and provide them with in-context uh, um, uh, kiosk experiences tie that in together with our best-in-class integration platform to connect disparate applications as well as data into a single environment with the ability of providing a, uh, a programmable, flexible infrastructure that allows us to deploy applications anywhere. But when we look at being able to support uh, B2B processes or having the ability for a company to go beyond their network. So today we know that customers are doing businesses or conducting business on a global scale that involves their partners, vendors, customers, and employees. Um, and what they are facing is the constant need to provide a collaborative environment um, because they realize that the cost of doing business is costing them time and money if they're not able to digitize their services fast enough to meet demand in what we're really seeing as a hyper-distributed world. And so, as a result, what companies or organizations are doing today is they actually are investing in building systems that are going to connect these large distributed organizations so that they can essentially develop new, uh, new businesses or new business models. And so, but the challenge is a lot of these organizations are doing this today when, you know, when there's large investments that are required. Um, we also see the problem of you know, the, the amount of time that actually it takes to deploy some of these things, as well as you know, the, uh, you know, their inability to move fast enough as you know, competition kind of starts to creep in and uh, invade in their space. And so the challenge around this is how am I going to be able to operate in these complex environments where it involves you know, thousands of employees, partners, all these relationships I need to manage, um, and then while you know, protecting you know, my sensitive information and data you know, as the business continues to evolve. So I'm essentially a, a company, I need to, I realize the, the need or, or even the power of just digitizing the services because the opportunities now for me to take advantage of this is, is I need to have a platform that will allow me to deliver services dynamically, allow me to get to market faster with, the, with agility, build in the reliability and as well as agility to, to get there, all around a secure and collaborative environment. So what do we mean by that? Essentially, as, as a company or organization, you know, I am having to manage these complex networks. And so what we're doing with our platforms today is we actually are simplifying the way they do business. So if you think about you know, how am I going to connect to these partners, how am I going to share the data, how am I going to share, uh, connect up the applications that I need in order to do bis my day-to-day -day business. So we're taking these complex external networks and helping companies and organizations manage the people, the data, and processes so they don't have to worry about you know, whether or not their systems can keep pace with uh, the rapid change that's happening all around them. Um, because as, a, as what's you know, facing these people are issues of you know, how do I continue to innovate, how do I to continue to uh, modernize my services, you know, all the while of you know, working on the problem of 
having to upgrade or update or, or maintain uh, my own systems. Because a lot of times what, what they end up doing is, is as I mentioned, you know, they invest in building platforms that's going to connect to, to the outside world so that I can actually offer a service a, or really talk about you know, supporting the processes that I need in order to do my businesses every day. So I introduced the, the service exchange platform. And so what this does is it, it provides a cloud offering to enable organizations to securely connect, engage, and um, collaborate with enterprise uh, B2B ecosystems. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating marketplaces, we're cre creating a B2B exchanges for companies to interact with uh, other organizations uh, outside of, of their networks. So we start that by providing a set of identity services that allow them to tightly manage and control people who are entering their network so we can provide authorization and authentication services. Uh, we're providing uh, the next layer of brokerage in that we're tying in all the applications as well as the data. Um, we're orchestrating the services that are required to be able to build and support those systems. Um, provide secure connectivity so that when you are going beyond you know, the firewall, how am I going to manage essentially those interactions? Um, but more importantly, we have now a way to externalize services so that it actually can be consumed by other individuals outside of, of the network. And then finally, deliver that on an experience, um, immersive experience that we can deliver it on any portal uh, or any device so that we can do things like federated single sign-on, um, and are all built around this idea of a marketplace, which is you know, highly uh, agnostic to the verticals because we provide the platform, but then help our customers build vertical solutions that span on within the financial industry, energy, retail, automotive. So it can actually be leveraged you know, across a wide range of uh, industries. So what do I mean by building B2B exchanges? Exactly what is it that we're, we're going to do? So I'm highlighting a few uh, use cases in terms of what SXP can provide. So when you think about uh, supply chain, there's the need to be able to, to tie up all the suppliers that I work with if I'm, say, for instance, an OEM or a manufacturer, for instance. So we provide a highly federated supply chain that needs uh, identity services. Um, a portal, application integration services, built around a workflow that I can support using the platform so that I can actually exchange information. So for instance, I'm a, uh, a manufacturer, I need to be able to tie in or find out if I have inventory to be able to support the build out of a new product that, that, that I'm uh, building on the factory floor. So what we do is actually we provide a, an exchange between these other organizations and then manage a workflow around that. So if I need to be able to know if I have inventory in stock to be able to produce the product, you know, how am I going to get there? So we operate this on a global scale because we know that today we're operating in a global economy, you know, the parts can be coming from anywhere and I need to be able to, to tightly manage how that information is going to get to me so that I can actually be prepared and meet uh, market challenges. We provide uh, customer experience around um, you know, connected vehicle, for instance. So we are helping companies, OEMs, to maintain engagements with uh, vehicle owners to increase uh, customer loyalty by providing them things like owner portal, uh, portals. So we give them a way to be able to engage with OEMs and then directly with the consumer or, or the owner so that I can know things like, you know, as a vehicle owner, is it time for me to take my car in for service? You know, is it time for me to, you know, go in and get an oil change? You know, or as an OEM, how do I stay, stay engaged so that I can roll out new services, you know, that, uh, that's going to be of value to them? So we provide a single customer uh, experience built around a workflow that allows me to stay connected and engaged with, uh, with those product owners, if you will. Within field services, we provide a, uh, um, a, a field delivery where we center around diagnostic and maintenance services, but we're supporting the workflow that enables somebody within uh, field uh, services to be able to manage, update, and upgrade uh, equipment that could be out you know, in the field. So for instance, if I'm a, you know, I, I sell and manage and uh, 
take care of uh, diagnostic equipment that's located within the hospital. So we, pull, we put together the ability to tie in securely individuals as a field tech to be able to get into remotely into that hospital's network down to the level of the actual equipment itself so that I can do things like updates and be able to do things like troubleshoot issues um, built around a sort of a collaborative environment so then I can be in touch with the customer or if I need to go back to the back office and then be able to get, you know, either download new firmware or I need to go into a test bed to be able to, be able to do my troubleshooting. And then another example is built around how we're helping contract manufacturers build solutions on top of SXP so they, they can do things like be able to control who has access to uh, product information on the factory floor. So a lot of times you see people who are uh, accessing information uh, that necessarily they don't have the, the, the privilege, but they get there anyways. So what we are doing is we're providing a, a solution that allows them to control the identity or really the individual, offer a control-based service that really is uh, going to manage who has access to the products or the information. So really what you're doing is at the end of the day controlling IP, sensitive information, be able to provide audit services around that but really the idea is being able to provide a platform that can bring in these solutions uh, on top of uh, what we're doing. And then finally, around M&A activity. So if I'm a company, if I'm uh, basically acquired a new company, I'm the IT department, but now I have the responsibility of bringing these individuals into uh, the, you know, the, 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 old, the, the new company, essentially. How am I going to manage all those users? How am I going to give them a way to be able to access all the different services they need as well as being able to provide you know, a way to control you know, what network resources they get into. So again, it's built around identity services, creating a portal experiences, and then tying in the applications, and then be able to act and expose those applications to those individuals so that they're not getting anything beyond what they're supposed to. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, just on terminology because uh, what we really develop are really two key things around SXP. One is really around a marketplace. And then the other one is really around enterprise B2B. But there's certain things I want to kind of highlight before I kind of go into some more you know, examples. But from a user perspective, you know, what we're doing is, is that we're controlling access to what features and then uh, also controlling what tasks they can actually perform on the platform so we're, per, we're uh, granting them permissions so that security administrators can go in and register users, go in and assign them roles and a set of permissions that then they can go ahead and limit or enhance their ability to be able to do things within the platform itself. We have the notion of creating applications or service packages. So then after you create these users, you can then go in and assign a set of services uh, or applications to the individuals based on their role, uh, as well as um, you know, the, 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 the organizational level as well. We have the concept of service externalization, which is really the idea of being able to take an application or a service and externalize that beyond the enterprise's uh, firewall. So we have a secure way of being able to take that and then be able to offer that as a service to other individuals within a different company or a different network, uh, if you will. And then around that is service management. So as I create these services, as I assign them to individuals, I need to be able to manage these services so I can do things like add services, I can modify, I can delete services, or create essentially entirely new packages that I'm going to offer to my, uh, to my, to my customers, essentially. Um, and then what's key to, to make all this happen is what we call the service edge. And so at the edge, which basically functions as a, uh, as a gateway uh, that sits at the edge of the network, it actually provides uh, our ability or the customer's ability to then now starting to externalize those services so they, it can be deployed um, within the, um, a seller or a buyer premise, essentially, within the marketplace context. And then it's uh, accessed through what we call the virtual service network, which is basically our uh, uh, SSL VPN. So, um, so the Edge uh, module essentially allows you to um, control the links, the service channels, as well as the, the resources that are sitting um, on that Edge. Okay. So what does that mean? So we're 
talking about service externalization, you know, or a platform to be able to deliver services. And so what we do here is we actually take a service that we're able to expose and offer it as a service. So essentially we're working with web, SOAP, REST, FTP based applications. They're essentially just uh, web enabled or non-web enabled. But what we do here is we actually take that, we have the ability to go ahead and expose that as a service to other individuals. In this example, I'm company ABC, I offer a banking service to my users within my network for ABC users. But I realize that if I'm doing business with another partner or if I'm going to offer this and monetize the service, I need to be able to have a way to be able to ex expose that as a service so that it can be consumed as a virtual service for the users uh, that are sitting on uh, Bank X. So the Bank X users essentially will have access and to them it's just basically a, a virtualized service. And so we provide, at the edge, trust mediation. We sync up with uh, the identities, we provide uh, identity synchronization. Uh, we do token validation, as well as provide the secure connectivity between the organizations so that we can actually uh, provide uh, that level of connectivity. But again, as I mentioned, you need to have the service management, you need to have the identity services to be able to you know, authenticate and authorize users, um, and then provide that around a portal experience so that you have a way of providing integrated, um, immersive uh, experience that can be delivered on any device. So, marketplace. So now we kind of you know, shown you how we actually are exposing services, but if you take that to the next level, what are we talking about? We're talking about setting up a, a marketplace so that we create the notion of exchange owners. So now what I'm going to do essentially is, as an exchange owner, I have a set of services or applications that I'm going to offer to people that I'm calling you know, my buyers. So I'm actually going to be able to connect up with buying centers, and then now I have a way to create a marketplace for my applications and services, be able to monetize that and use that as a sort of a, a go-to-market for, for my business. Okay. Um, the, the other way to look at it is if we're talking about enterprise B2B services, you know, so maybe I'm not selling, maybe I'm not you know, have a, a seller or buyer relationship, but I need to expose a service so that I actually can do business. So if I have now an ecosystem of partners and vendors, I need to be able to share my applications with their ERP or you know, what have you. So how is it that I'm going to be able to include them now within, uh, within my network securely without having to expose anything else of my network? So then now what I'm doing is great, really creating a B2B exchange. So in the earlier example, you know, supply chain. I have you know, a, a factory, you know, I have uh, suppliers, I have all these different you know, companies or indiv external individuals that I'm working with now. How am I actually gonna you know, combine all that so that I can actually create my ecosystem and be able to build out uh, you know, and support my business process? Because what we're doing at the end of the day is creating a platform that allows you to create a new business process based on this, the, the, the type of services or applications that you want to offer and be able to provide to either your end users uh, that are internal, external, or be able to maintain you know, your ecosystem that includes your partners, suppliers, and, you know, and including your customers. So at the end of the day, you're creating a, a market catalog. And so kind of an example of what this looks like essentially you have now the exchange, you have a marketplace, and then now you have a place to be able actually to now go ahead and monetize or just offer this internally within your own employees. So think of this as a way to be able to offer a service, create users to have access to the platform, and then be able to, based on their role, have a set of applications that they have access to based on you know, what their you know, privileges that, that they've been given. So I can you know, provide you know, any number of services, any number of applications, and then based on who I am, I can actually, you know, tailor, you know, tailor this towards that particular, you know, process or business or service that, now, that I'm now trying to support. So for a developer standpoint, we are building uh, now sort of the developer program, but really this is uh, tailored around uh, a lot of ISVs or you know, maybe consultants. You know, so the independent software vendors, you know, they basically want to be able to use our platform to be able to uh, de rapidly deliver applications and services. Um, that they, they can go in and uh, offer it as, uh, as a service, you know, to either, you know, as part of an offering
something that an exchange owner might have, or they've been invited to be able to go ahead and build the application and offer it to the exchange owner's uh, uh, customers, essentially. So we provide a set of uh, Java and REST APIs to help you manage the users and the roles, uh, be able to control the resources that are sitting uh, at, the, at the edge, um, a set of services around uh, messaging so that we can do a lot of the data integration that's happening, and then the ability to be able to create and manage a, a service catalog like the one that I just showed. So from a component level, we can also we also have the ability to be able to ex abstract a lot of information so you can actually do a lot of the metering and then tie that into a payment gateway so you can do the billing. Uh, you know, build in you know, uh, rules around the security that you're going to provision around the users, the systems, and the applications. Um, as well as any kind of notification services that you want to be able to uh, support using uh, our developer tools. So uh, that was service exchange platform. So if there are any questions, um, my contact information is here. We do have more information at cisco.com, but uh, if there are any questions now, I'll be happy to take them. Yes. I just want to understand the pricing model and the scalability of the platform. Can I have a billion users and how much is going to cost me? Okay, I think the first thing I heard is that you want to understand the pricing model for something like this. So, pricing model for something like this actually is uh, consumption based. So, it, you essentially pay by the drink. Um, and so, we have different uh, ways of being able to, to support that. But depending on, you know, final use case, you know, and what kind of partner ecosystem or, or environment we actually build in, essentially, you know, you're, it's, it's basically offered as a SaaS platform. This is a SaaS model, essentially. Oh. How can I, how big can I scale this? Can I have a billion clients taking advantage of my service off of this platform? <sighs> Say again. John Chambers said, don't get involved until I can have a billion people using the service. Can your service scale <laughs> to a billion? Well, it actually can scale. So we, we have customers today that uh, are operating on a high level, a high scale. So we actually uh, have, for example, a, uh, a company that's connected up um, over half a million users, um, you know, over 45,000 applications. You know, uh, as well as over 500 applications themselves. So it actually is, is pretty robust and scalable. And um, you know, it's really it's it's, it's the limit is, is your imagination at this point. Okay, we're good. Thank you very much, Henry. Thank you.